A study conducted by the Royal Society for Public Health last year took a look at the effects of using social media on the mental health of 1,500 individuals. They discovered that out of the five most commonly used social media platforms, frequent usage in four of them, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram, caused mental health issues, while only one, YouTube, had a somewhat positive effect on mental health. The four platforms that caused mental health issues were then ranked from least damaging to most damaging, and here are the results. Twitter being the least, followed by Facebook, followed by Snapchat, and at the very bottom, the social media platform that messes with your head the most, Instagram. Now this brings up the question of, well, why? Why is Instagram the platform that causes the most mental health problems? And why is it that using social media platforms is ruining your life? And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. See, the thing is, our brain is constantly collecting data about our environment without us really noticing it. It does this for a variety of reasons, such as making sure that we're not in danger or to see if there are any resources nearby. But one of the most important reasons it does this is to check and see where we currently stand in what's called the social hierarchy. See, within every Every social situation within every environment that you find yourself in, whether it be at school, at work, or even at a nightclub, there is a hierarchy. A pyramid. The people at the top of this pyramid are the ones who have the most power, the ones who are the strongest, the wealthiest, the ones with the most influence. Now, our brain determines where people stand on this pyramid by primarily looking at visual cues. We look at someone's physique, how muscular and fit they are, to determine physical strength. We look at things that someone owns, like clothing, cars, and their lifestyle to determine someone's wealth. And we look at the types of people they surround themselves with to determine their level of influence. We look at all of these things to determine where the people around us are on the pyramid but we also use this information to determine where we are on the exact same pyramid now back in the day before the invention of the internet before everyone started using social media there weren't that many people to compare ourselves to well, your brain would simply look at the people that you spent the most time around and make an estimation off of that for example when you were still in school your brain mainly focused on the kids that attended your school now let's say for the purposes of this video that you were a perfectly average kid back in high school you had an average amount of friends, you came from an average family with an average income, you were average looking, as average as can be. When your brain compared you to the people in your surrounding, it would probably look something like this. There were probably only a couple of kids who were above you on the pyramid, the popular kids, captains of sports teams, members of student council, etc. But to be honest, there really weren't that many, maybe only 5 to 10% of the school population. At the same time, there were probably also a couple of kids who were below you on the pyramid. Kids who didn't have any friends, who had a hard time socializing, these kids probably made up about another 5-10% to 10 of the school population. The remaining 80% of the school population were people who were pretty much average, just like you. Just really average kids from average families with really normal lives. You know, some might have been slightly above and some slightly below you, but most people were pretty close to each other on the pyramid. Now back in the day, when you were in an environment like this, you didn't feel like you were inferior to the people around you. Sure, there were a couple of people who are better than you at things, who are above you on the pyramid, but the vast majority of people were essentially your equals. At least that's how your brain saw it. But fast forward to modern times. Even if you're a 17 year old kid in high school, surrounded by mostly average kids who are just like you, your brain thinks that you are competing against extremely successful people. It believes that there are extremely wealthy, fit, and popular people who are around your age all around you. And it believes this because of the amount of time you spend on social media. See, the average American now spends on average two hours every single day on social media. However, that's including adults and the elderly. A recent study actually found that the average teenager is spending around six to nine hours on social media every single day. And the thing is, when you're spending that many hours on social media, your brain no longer sees your current environment as it is. It starts to believe that all of these people you see on Instagram are people who are actually around you in real life and then it starts to look at their lives and it compares it to your own. It notices that these people are so much better looking than you mainly because of things like lighting, angles, filters, and Photoshop. Then your brain starts to believe that there are all of these people who are much more successful than you, wealthier than you. It sees people your age driving fancy cars, going on exotic vacations, wearing expensive clothes and then your brain starts to believe that there are all of these people living happier lives than you. Hundreds and hundreds of pictures smile as if every single second of their lives were filled with bliss. By spending this much time on social media, you trick your brain into believing
believing that you are no longer average, that you are no longer somewhere in the middle of the pyramid. It starts to believe that you are actually in the bottom 5%. Instead of having just a handful of people who are above you, your brain starts to believe that most people in the world are above you. The bar is raised almost impossibly high. It seems like everyone is living close to perfect lives and you're just here living an average one. The more time you spend on social media platforms like Instagram, the lower and lower on the pyramid you start to believe you are. And that's where all of the mental health problems stem from. See, the bottom of any social hierarchy is not a good place to be. This applies to humans and most other mammals. If you're at the bottom of the pyramid, it means you are one of the least valuable people in the group. It means that nobody cares about you. It means that you're expendable. This increases your levels of anxiety drastically. It causes things like insomnia, panic attacks, depression and addiction because you can't relax when you're at the bottom. It's like coming up second to last place on one of those reality TV shows, one more mistake and you're dead. How can you relax and enjoy life when you believe you're hanging off the cliff with just a couple of fingers? Now of course this isn't real. The truth is you're probably not at the bottom of the social hierarchy. Most people around you live very average lives. You're most likely somewhere around the middle of the social hierarchy in your environment but your brain doesn't know that because you're spending six hours every single day in a fantasy world. A world filled with models, Lambos, vacations, and endless smiles. A world that literally no one can compete with. Even the most successful people in the world can't compete. No one is happy every single second of their day as their pictures will like to have you believe. And that's why social media platforms like Instagram are ruining your life. Because they force you into thinking you have to compete against a huge group of imaginary people that you can never beat. This episode was brought to you with the help of the guys at Brilliant.org. Instead of spending hours every single day making your life worse by using social media, it's much smarter to spend your time learning about things that will eventually help you down the line. Brilliant.org is a perfect place to do just that. You can learn about subjects such as problem solving, math, logic, and other useful topics that will help you accomplish more in life. What's great about them is that they don't just make you regurgitate facts and memorize them. They employ a much more hands-on approach. My favorite course right now is the joy of problem solving. I'm a huge advocate of the fact that in order to succeed in life, you need to be good at solving the problems that come your way. If you want to do something now that will definitely help you in the future, then I suggest you go to brilliant.org forward slash improvement pill to sign up for free. The first 200 people to click on the link in the description box below will also get 20% off their yearly plan. So act fast, guys. Besides that, guys, stay tuned.